Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Well, this is Michael Trayvon's RV Center here to congratulate you on your Grand Design Solitude 375 RES fifth wheel. I'm here to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things to get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite and a few things to take into consideration when parking. On your campsite, you have to leave room for both those slides, of course, but I also want you to think about your awning up there. That's gonna come out further than your slides. On your off camp side, again, three slides to think about, but I also want you to think about where your power and water connections are gonna be. Your power is gonna be just in front of your slide here, on your off camp side, and then your docking station is gonna be inside this storage here. So park accordingly so you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Once we arrive, unhook our hitch. First thing we're gonna do is level our unit. So coming around here to our off campsite. Here's our Lipper auto leveling system. And our level up system instructions are right there. So all we're really going to do is turn this on. It says jacks down. We're simply going to take and raise the front up just enough to get your hitch off there. Once you got your hitch up off there, we're just going to touch auto level. Now, Take notes, first thing that's gonna happen, I'm gonna close this door here, is the front of the unit is gonna dip down. Once that dips down, it's gonna bring itself back up, and it's gonna start running down your auto leveling. So shifting up here, put kind of the back where we can see both. All right, once them are down, you can hear me now, I got the music turned down. Got our unit level and stable, we can hook up our power and water. Now that's gonna flash during the whole time that this is leveling. When it's done, that light stays on. All right, big long 50 amp cord, plugs in here on the side. Should you need uh, to plug into a 30 amp in your convenience pack, we'll give you a 50 to 30 amp reducer. If you need to plug into a 110, there's 30 to 15 amp reducer to go on the end of that. There's your power, let's hook up your water. Gave you a nice docking station here with all kinds of knobs to read. At campsites, we are going to hook up to city water connection. So we're going to have our white to the right, our blue down, our black to the right, red and green are up. We match this. Now we're going to grab our water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is going to reduce water pressure 40 to 50 psi, protecting the lines in the unit. Always use this when putting fluid in your unit. Take that, hook it up. Hook up your hose, but don't turn your hose on yet. You have one more step. Back behind this panel here will be your hot water heater. And all we're doing at this point, making sure our drain plug's in there. Throw some plumber's tape around that, not putty. Putty will gum up on you. Get that in there nice and snug. Once that's in there tight, go ahead and turn that hose on. Now I want you to go inside. I use level and stable. Open up all of your slides. Go to your control panel to get all of them opened up because I need you to get in there and open up all of your water taps. Get all of your water lines opened up, get all the air out of the lines, get a nice steady flow of water. Um, then you'll know that your hot water heater is full. Lift up on a pressure release valve. Once you got some water coming out of there, you know you can turn that on indoors. Now let's say we're going to go camping and we're not going to use city water. We're going to go dry camping or boondocking. Well, in that case, you have a two-step process. 
start with power tank fill. We will move our knobs accordingly. Once you do, you're going to go ahead and fill it in the same spot. However, you're going to go inside and you're going to watch your fresh water tank. Once you see that's full, we're going to remove our hose. Then we're going to switch it to dry camping. Make all your knobs match, wet, match those. And then whenever you want to utilize that water, you'll turn on your water pump. Don't turn on your water pump and hook for city water that's already pressurized. All right, we're all set up with uh, power and water. We'll go ahead and walk you around the rest of the unit. Continuing here in the docking station. Again, your water pump up top. Nice hot and cold shower, a big long spray port here. Cable and satellite connections. Again, city water, dry camping. We go power tank fill, then dry camp. And there's how you'll set to winterize by bypassing your hot water heater and sanitize here. Again, all your knobs for that. Water, black tank flush. We'll talk about that when we dump our black and gray tanks down there. Accent light for the front of the unit. Your water filter. And a big pass-through storage over here. Again, your hot water heater. There's a flue for your furnace. Two things on that. One, make sure it's never blocked. And two, if you are running it, steer clear of that. It does get hot. Again, our power. Access to the back of your fridge for technicians. More storage than I've seen in almost any fifth wheel I've seen. Get a ladder, utilize it. Go up there a couple times a year, check the seams of your roof, and caulk as needed with recommended RV roofing caulk. Going around back, you've got your big slide drawer. Storage as well, again, ton of storage in here. Going around to your campsite, more storage doors. And this is a manual override to be able to get up underneath there and get down your, not a override, but bring down your spare tire. Continuing around your campsite here, big storage area, propane. Up front, you prep for solar panel. You can plug in the solar panel right there and it'll trickle charge your batteries. You get another docking light up front. And inside here, or latch this up here. Here's your battery and your hydraulics uh, leveling fluid. The auto leveling system. One more spot. Here's your propane. There's a regulator up here. Lefty Lucy to open. That about covers everything out here. Let's go take a look on the inside. Coming up inside the unit, first thing I always like to point out is the fire extinguisher. Make sure that you and everyone is camped with you knows the fire extinguisher is located at the entry doorway in case of emergency. Hang on right uh, here on the corner is going to be your thermostat. Go ahead and shut that air off. Oops, got to get all the way back around to off. Shut your AC off. When I go to heat, you'll notice that when you shut the heat off, it takes a few minutes longer for the heat to cycle through before it. And down below that max air vent, all you gotta do is turn that on. It will open and turn on. So you got a max air vent cover on that too. Four different speeds on that. Shut that off. Come over here and open this up to a big pantry. And then back over here to our control panel. So tons of lights up here. Come down here, here's your battery. We check your battery, your fresh tank, black tanks, gray tanks. Uh, here's where you turn on your water heater hook to gas. Your water heater hook to electric. We're testing everything right now. Uh, turn on your water pump over here if you're using potable water. Fresh black and gray tank heaters, they're just 12 volt pads that set on your tanks in case you're going to be in inclement weather. Um, you think they might freeze, turn them on. 
tons more lighting on your awning. You're only gonna want to run that awning out till that white or till your flap falls down. Uh, if you hold that button down, that will continue to run itself out and start running itself up backwards. Like the all ones even new. So keep an eye on it. Make sure you only run it out as far as you need to. As I run that back in, make sure you get slide controls down here, and we'll utilize all those when we close the unit up. Now, awning rust way in. You hear it? And you close this and tell you that slam locks. Let's see how yours is held back here. You got a magnet holding your door. But they call these locks a slam lock. Works best when gently slammed. All right, we're going to continue into the kitchen. I got a new pantry, pantry, Norco fridge. All right, Norco fridge, turn that on here. So we're going to turn that on to auto. Auto means when you're plugged in, you're running off electricity as soon as you unplug your own gas, or just electric, or just gas. Over here is your temperature change, going through 9, 9 being the coldest. Self-explanatory microwave. That working. Um, you also have a high and low vent, and a light. So I'm going to use two hands because you need to push this, go to the light, push it down, and hit your spark. Same thing on all these, you have to push it down while you're lighting. And hold it in for just a second. Maybe a longer. Get it lit. Bring it down off light. Same thing here. Oops, forget to hold it. Bring it down off from light, and that'll keep it on. I'm being impatient. You gotta hold it on for a second, and you're all lit up. So, same thing down in the oven. Pilot light, or not a pilot light, it all lights by spark here. Turn it to the light, hit your spark, and it'll light up underneath there. Over here in the corner of the kitchen is your 12 volt carbon monoxide propane detector. The reason I mentioned that's 12 volt, always running off your battery. So if you're out dry camping or boondocking somewhere, nothing plugged in charging your battery, you're gonna be gone for the day. Use the battery disconnect up front to keep this from charge, running your battery down. More lighting up in here. So we'll come up into our living room. TV stores inside here. I'll show you that in a minute. We turn it on. Tell you real quick, as soon as you arrive at the campsite, you're going to go into menu. Go over using your arrows here and down to channel. Go in there. Go down to scan and run your digital channel scan. And that'll allow you to pick up the local channels. You got TV, HDMI, three different HDMIs, components you can put in, USB. And again, this stores down in here. Button there takes it down. Underneath that is your fireplace. Not just for looks anymore. Let's say we're at a campsite and it's getting chilly. Instead of using up your gas, over here to the right to touch, turn the heat on on this thing, crank that up, and it'll get toasting here in no time. I can go through, there's a timer on here. Um, I can show you different colors on it, different flames, brightness, um, some accents on the sides there changing different colors so a cool fireplace not just for looks it'll get you some heat I'll try to show you quickly how to turn your sofa into a bed remove your velcro cushions 
sand in the middle. Lift up. Hold these legs out. Pull it up and toward you. And just that quickly. You got a bed. Now that is possible. From both sides. This one and this one. Just remember, when putting it away, lift up the back first, otherwise you're going to damage your sofa. Again, standing in the middle gives you good leverage. Hold these in and down. And just that quickly, you are back to a sofa. Another AC up in here, the quick dump. What covers everything up here? Head on back to your bathroom. A couple things to mention in here. 110 with GSCI reset. A shower door that you want, because it's glass, snapped open for travel. Don't want that to be able to move. And some plumbing to maintain. Again, Packs nowadays, keep an eye on it. Make sure nothing's wiggled loose over time. Have a hand crank open. Power exhaust vent here. Back into our bedroom. Light in here. Separate AC. You can hear running right here. A closet door that you want to make sure. Shut the back off to show you all that. That you have snapped open down here for travel. So that holds that. Actually, we're going to want to bring that all the way closed. That one slides one way, and this one does the other. It's kind of hard to do with one hand there. There we go. Make sure you have this one snapped in that position. You are prepped for a washer and dryer here if you ever decide to get that in the future. Your other TV. Cable 110's up there. Again, same TCL TV, so just run your digital channel scan. A little bit of storage underneath your bed and that about covers everything on the inside I think I could leave it a campsite and close the unit up oh I'm sorry you do have an antenna here that's all the way to the right when you arrive crank it up to the left or all the way to the right to travel excuse me left um when you arrive and all the way to the right for travel, have that down. Shut up our lights in here. Accent lighting. So what I like to do is come to my main control panel. And shut off as many lights as I can. Then I can look around the unit and see a ton of lights that I still have to walk through and shut off. Alright, so I'll walk through the unit, shut off all the lights except for the ones I can turn on and off here at the control panel. Now I'm going to say doors and drawers. Walk through the unit, make sure all doors and drawers are closed. Nothing's going to impede your slides from coming in and these utilize every inch. So make sure these are not like that. We want them in. Same thing up in the living room, nothing in the way of your slides. Come to our control panel. I'm going to start with number one. That's going to be our kitchen slide. And the other pantry slide. What's that number one there? Number two. Number two is going to bring in our bedroom slide again. Make sure your dresser drawers are closed. 
Nothing's in the way there. I did say doors and drawers, so let me show you. Make sure we do close this one. Again, making sure our vents are closed. Uh, this one here in, your, in the hallway, turn your bathroom light on. This one we want to snap open. Make sure that's snapped open for travel. Coming back down here, we're on to number three. The three should be our campsite up front. See that going in. And lastly, slide number four. Off campsite, sleeper sofa. Last one's in here. Shut off our interior lights and exit the unit. All right, coming out. Uh, in or out of these steps, you want to make sure this exterior door is all the way open. Otherwise, this is going to catch on. Your steps are also adjustable. So if you press in on this and adjust the feet where you want. Set this inside. Turn this right or left, it doesn't matter. Just enough to lock your door in there. Before you leave the dump station. And I say that in case you go inside to check the levels of your tanks while you're dumping. Before you leave the dump station, lock and deadbolt your door. Lift and turn that handle for travel. Alright, if we are out boondocking, we're going to go around and dump our freshwater tank. Which was... Dip underneath his back tire, grab that handle, which they gave an extension. A lot of people, you have to climb up underneath there to get to that white one. Pull and open up that fresh water tank. Bring up our stabilizing jacks and head on home. If we're at a campsite, unhook our power, our water, our cable. Bring up our stabilizing jacks and head on up to the dump station. So let's bring these up. Bring them up, first thing we're gonna do it says jacks down we are going to push right and left at the same time and what that's going to do is set your landing gear back to where it was then we are going to use our up and down arrow until this gets to auto retract and hit enter now what that again is going to do is dip our front and then it's going to bring up our stabilizing jacks Once then we're up. Head on up to the dump station. As you see, my legs are down. So we just come to front and just bring them front legs back up and set it at where you want it to hook up your hitch. And again, head on up to the dump station. At the dump station, park accordingly. Your dump is going to be right in front of your tires here. That 10 foot hose comes your convenience pack. Hook that up, come into your dump station, and pull that black handle down there. The one all the way on the left. Now, once it sounds like that's no longer draining, go inside, check your black tank. If it's empty, leave that black handle open, come out here, grab your hose at the dump station, hook up to this black tank flush and let that run for a good five minutes. That's gonna wash all that nastiness out of your black tank. 
When that's done, make sure all that washout you just put in there has drained out. Then close your black and pull your first gray. Now these are gonna be cleaner waters, your sinks and your showers. Normally while my grays are draining, I go ahead and dump my low point drains. Them low point drains are done. If we're done camping for the season or it's gonna be a while, you don't wanna leave water stagnant in your hot water heater. Come up here, lift up on this pressure release valve. It's gonna dump some hot water out of there, be careful. Push that back down or your door won't close. And then come down here and pull your drain plug for the rest of it. When that last gray is done, go ahead and push that close. Take your sewage hose, store it back here in your bumper in a nice convenient and sanitary place. And head on home. Again, thank you guys so much for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this solitude for many years to come. Happy camping.